The CDC is facing formidable challenges in convincing conservatives to get COVID-19 vaccines, but vaccine hesitancy isn't just falling on political lines, but religious ones as well. White evangelicals are the most hesitant, with 40% saying they likely will not get vaccinated, compared to 25% of all Americans who say the same. I want to talk about this now with the Reverend Franklin Graham, who is president and CEO of Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Uh, sir, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Brianna, for having me. So you are trying to convince evangelicals to get vaccinated. You're also leading by example. You were fully vaccinated yourself. How are you feeling about having that protection against the virus? Well, well, first of all, Brandon, I'm, I'm 68 years old, and the last thing I need is COVID. It could probably kill me at my age. And so I would encourage people uh, to get the vaccine if you are my age or older. Uh, so important. And with Samaritan's Purse, we have treated a lot of COVID uh, patients right there in New York City, uh, Italy, the Bahamas, uh, Los Angeles County with our medical hospitals. Um, it, it's, it's a disease you don't want. It's a virus that can kill you. And we've had a number of our staff that have, uh, have been extremely sick uh, on respirators for several months. And it's just not, uh, it's just not worth the risk. I would encourage people to, to pray about it, think about it. Uh, certainly would never want to tell somebody you have to have it, or it, it, I think the government would make a big mistake to mandate this. Uh, it's a personal choice. Uh, my wife and I made a personal choice, but you know, Brianna, uh, Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth, he used his power as the son of God to bring healing to people's bodies. And we as Christians, we want to follow his example and use modern medicine uh, to bring healing to people. And of course, the vaccine is, uh, prevents uh, this virus or can, and it's just a good way to go. And I would encourage people to pray about it and really consider it. It's so important because it can save life. And of course, Brianna, I'm pro-life and I want to save life. We've talked before on the show about your voice on this topic. And it's so important because you are an incredibly prominent evangelical voice in the country speaking out in favor of vaccines. At the same time, and you're aware of this, there are many evangelical pastors who have been spreading a lot of disinformation to their congregants about the virus and also vaccines. Let's listen. And somebody get a little close, they go. <laughs> That's called germophobic. Watch this. You think I'm sucking the virus off of her? <laughs> I came today to declare victory over the virus. COVID-19. I blow, I blow the wind of God, the wind wind of God, God on, you. on you. You are destroyed forever. You are you destroyed, destroyed forever. And you will never be back. So you'll, you'll recognize that some of those are from March and April of last year. But if you track a lot of those pastors, you know, occasionally you run into one who now admits that basically COVID exists, but this disinformation is still very prevalent and it's spreading not just about coronavirus, but about the vaccine. You're aware that evangelicals are one of the most skeptical groups, white evangelicals, especially of vaccine and COVID facts. What do you say to their pastors about their responsibility? Well, uh, well, first of all, the, these pastors that you had on television, uh, they represent such a small percentage of, uh, of the Christian base. And I, I, would, I would just ignore those guys. Uh, the, I'm talking about the individual pastor the Sunday after Sunday who gets up in his pulpit, who preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, tells people how to, uh, to turn from their sins and receive Christ by faith into their heart, to their life. These pastors are out there in the trenches every day. And I would encourage these pastors just to inform their congregation about where they can get a vaccine if they want a vaccine and, uh, and, and give them, you know, the information. Uh, not try to coerce them, but just give them information. But the coronavirus is a, the real deal. It, it can make you extremely sick. It can kill you. And Samaritan's Purse, we have been dealing with this. We have seen it firsthand. And so I, I know what it can do. And I, I'm, I'm afraid for people who just are uh, very cavalier about it. Uh, you need to take the precautions. 
Uh, I believe that masks have worked. I believe that hand sanitizers have worked. I believe social distancing has worked. And, uh, and now, of course, we're lifting that, and I think that's good. But people still need to be cautious, Brianna. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet, and, and the coronavirus is going to be around for a while. And I would encourage people to consider the vaccine if they haven't considered it. Again, I took it. Uh, I, I was sick for one day. I felt like I was coming down with the flu just one day and boom, uh, then I was over it. Uh, and I, I still function. I traveled that day to California. I did some filming that day, uh, even though I didn't feel good. But that was just a reaction. And uh, I talked to doctors. They said, well, that's normal. And that's, uh, that was a good sign that you had a reaction. But I would encourage people just to pray about it. And uh, you, you talk about the numbers. It's like 40 45% of the evangelicals say they won't take it, but 45% of all uh, blue collar workers say they're not gonna take it. In Germany, 50% of all the nurses say they're not gonna take it. I mean, so that you got a, a, a large group of people out here and these numbers are shifting, but I think with the evangelical community, the numbers are shifting uh, downward. I think they're learning, they're getting more information and uh, they're beginning to see through this and I think they'll take it. I mean, I will say, I don't know if it's fair to minimize the reach of some of these pastors or look, they may just be reinforcing what some of their congregants already feel. We have looked at what they've said. These are pastors, uh, not just the ones we showed, but a number of them who speak to millions upon millions of people. So there are definitely people listening to them. But I, I want to ask you, because the disinformation that we're seeing driving vaccine hesitancy among evangelicals, it's really part of a bigger disinformation problem that includes, you know, lies about the outcome of the 2016 election that Trump, not Biden, won, which many evangelicals believe, which is something that you uh, have given life to. Do you have any regrets about publicly doubting the outcome of the 2016 election? No, or the, 2020, you, I'm yeah, sorry. You've got about 73 <laughs> You've got about 73 million Americans out there that have some concerns about the, the election. And uh, listen, I think it's time we move on. The election is over with it. We've got to go. We've got to move on as a country, move forward. Uh, president Biden is the president. It's and not I'm over, sir. sir res respectfully, Reverend, respectfully, it's not over for a lot of people. It is not. I mean, we're looking at this well, audit it, going on in it, Arizona. So do you, so then how, how do you square what, so you don't, you don't believe what you said before in December about believing Trump when he said it was rigged? There, there are 73 million plus people out there that feel there was funny business in that election. Uh, I've moved on, Brianna. I, I, we're trying to save people's lives. Uh, we've got a real crisis in front of us and I want to work with the Biden administration if we can uh, to try to get information out that would save life. And uh, to me, the election is behind us. President uh, Biden won, he's sworn in, and let's just move on as a nation. With, with, I think it's all, so important that we move on. With all due respect, sir, I understand that you're saying that, but there are people who doubt the outcome of the election. They are not moving on. And many folks, including yourself, told them uh, not to, essentially, or to, to question the outcome of this election. You did it more than a month after the outcome of the election. Are you, do you stand corrected? Is what you said incorrect? No, I don't think it's incorrect. I'm just saying, Brenna, it is what it is. You've got 73. So you're saying that Joe Biden that, uh, didn't win the election, something... but that you're moving on. I just want to be very clear about what you're no. saying. No, uh, let's be very clear. I've said I'm moving on. Uh, he's the president and we, he needs our support. He needs our prayers. And uh, we've got a virus in front of us that needs to be uh, focused on. And so the election, you know, we've got another election coming up in two years, the midterms, and then four years from now, another presidential election, and uh, we can uh, uh, work toward that. But let's, let's get past 2020 and move on. All right, sir, I will just say many people have not moved on. They believe, as you put it, have concerns about the election. Many of them believe that it was inaccurate, and there were people in positions of power, including yourself, who gave them reason uh, to believe that. But look, sir, we certainly appreciate having you on. All of these are important issues to cover. We really appreciate the efforts that you are making on coronavirus vaccines. Reverend Franklin Graham, thank you for being with us. God bless. Thank you, Brianna.